Susie Homesteader of the Rockies and welcome to the Susie Homesteader channel and today we're going to talk about some uh, projects that involve becoming more self-reliant and becoming more self-reliant generally starts in your kitchen and in your home and what I want to do today is explain to you a real easy way to start storing some small short-term bulk storage items some dry items um, and some possible wet items like pickles or other things that could be fermented in a jar. Um, and in a way that's easy to see in a glass jar and also um, easy to display and have access to. Um, there's lots of kinds of uh, storage that we can talk about, but this is going to be short term and something that you want to try not to use too often so you don't keep running out. But some things will always be empty, like your cookie jar, <laughs> or your granola bar jar, or your muffins jar. Some of those things will always be empty, no matter how many times you fill them up. But the idea here is to find, number one, the space to do all this. And the second dilemma you have, which we'll talk about in a minute, is also um, the cost of beginning your preparation and your storage. It is expensive and it does add up and unless you're doing it little by little, um, that's going to be a hard goal to get to. The way to really get started without getting discouraged is just by taking small steps like this and as I said, just starting with some small glass jars or containers and then, um, you know, maybe every month when you go to the grocery store and you're doing your regular shopping, just grab another um, bulk item like a big giant bag of rice or flour. Um, that you can at least get in the kitchen. And so don't worry about, you know, five gallon buckets of long-term rice storage or anything like that yet. Just start small and every time you go to the store grocery shopping, grab one more bulk item. So that's the idea. And, you know, it will cost you money, but over time, if you just keep adding to it little by little and room by room, before you know it, you'll be completely prepared. And I like to start with the glass jars just because you can see how low they're getting. Um, and it's kind of easier to rotate some of your ingredients or your items if you're actually using them. And, you know, you can just see how full or empty they are and also get your labels out so that you have everything labeled easily. Um, most of these jars that I bought um, came from thrift stores. Once again, my favorite place. So jars like, you know, these good old ones with the, the canister style with a uh, airtight lid is one type of jar that you kind of want to focus on. Um, some items you definitely want them to be airtight. You know, and other items like cookies and stuff just need a lid. They don't have to be airtight, probably because they're not going to stay in the jar very long. Um, and you know, you can do some other fun things with your jars. These are actually uh, some old olive jars that I think I got from a bar. They were giving away a bunch of their old uh, condiment jars. And all I did was um, obviously clean them out, um, but spray paint the lid and stick a little uh, knob or a handle on the lid. And they're still airtight. And that's what you want um, in terms of maybe having bugs that might get into your, um, your ingredients. But um, lots of fun ways to collect jars. All these jars I have, I just collected over time, like I said, through, from either thrift stores or I bought them online. Um, these jugs that I have here, I did actually buy these online. But anytime you have some other jars or jugs that already had something in it, then just reuse them. Do not throw them out. So these were some old uh, beer half gallon jugs that um, I just kept and I think I was able to take the labels off of most of these but if you can't just put a new label on it. So there's a good way to reuse and repurpose your jars but don't ever throw out a jar that has a lid. And um, besides having just some fun jars to display, you want to of course label everything 
and then decide what kind of bulk items that you use the most depending on your cooking or your eating habits. Um, all these jars that I have here that are labeled are all things that we eat and we use. So if I think they've been sitting up there too long, I use it and then I rotate it by just adding a new batch. What this turns into is um, really a reorganization of your entire kitchen. And the idea here on space is to start giving yourself more and more space in all your other cabinets and all your other pantries for food that you might go through on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, this was just an old bookshelf that I had that I built a long time ago. Took my books out and turned it into storage. So besides the cost factor on beginning your preparations for um, food storage, you know, the space subject becomes a pretty big deal because most people don't actually have a lot of space in their kitchen for some longer term storage. So my suggestion is put it all in one area if you can, the stuff that you don't use the most or that often, and then free up all your other cabinets for the things that you go through faster. So besides just in your kitchen, you're eventually going to want to move into some bigger rooms and some bigger storage areas for your longer term storage. So the kitchen is just the beginning and your pantries um, before you even start storing things in basements or utility rooms or big closets or some other place you might have in the house where you can start adding your big five gallon buckets of uh, rice and flour and other items that we'll talk about in another video. <clears throat> and I will also have a list for you on my website, Susie Homesteader of the Rockies, of all these smaller short-term bulk dry items and some not so dry items um, but lots of things that you can store and then of course some of that will be based on some of the things you actually eat or don't eat. Um, my suggestion is that when you do your jars you, you do a half a gallon or a gallon or bigger. You know when you start getting into some of these smaller jars here it's not really that effective. Um, so could just shoot for the bigger jars, at least one gallon if you can. These are one gallon jars, these are one gallon jugs. Um, you know, some have tight lids, some just have some looser lids, um, some are airtight again. So, um, you know, kind of take the size of your jars into consideration when you're picking them out. Some of the other places that we're going to store some of our uh, items for self-reliant preparedness is going to be sheds, which might not involve food, but it'll be other items, and garages or possibly attics, um, root cellars, if you have one or if you don't have one and you want to start one, uh, your vehicles, which you'll also need some items to be prepared for, and um, just about any other place you have where you live that you can store things um, from A to Z. And I will have a list of all those things for you as well. So again, today the idea here is to just start freeing up your space in the kitchen that you already have. So maybe start by upgrading and organizing all the cabinets that you already have so that you can bring in more supplies. And then number two, creating new areas to, to start storing some of these larger supplies. Every time you go to the store, just grab something that's bigger than what you normally buy and before you know it, you'll have your kitchen stocked. So there's some good ideas for you. If you have any questions, come and see me on Susie Homesteader of the Rockies and watch the rest of my YouTube videos on our self-reliant subject and food storage and lots of other storage. So we'll see you there. Bye-bye. Let's get started. Subscribe to the Susie Homesteader channel and we'll see you there. Bye-bye.